Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see how can you implement infinite scroll UI with Next.js, React Query and Prisma. So if you find this topic interesting, make sure you watch the whole video and let's get started. Here I have opened an empty folder inside of VS Code and I am going to create a Next.js project with npx create next tab dot to say in this folder and dash dash ts to say to use TypeScript. So let's just enter and wait for it to finish. My Next.js application has been created successfully. So let's just start with installing some packages. We are going to install Prisma. It's as our ORM Prisma client, which is a database client, Axios to fetch and Faker for some fake data and types for Faker. After the packages have installed successfully, now let's just initialize Prisma with npx prisma in it. This will create a folder called prisma in the root directory and a .env file which is used to connect our database. In this project I am using PostgreSQL. Here you have to enter your correct credentials for database connection. So mine is a default Postgres user and my password and the port is the same as default and my database is infinite scroll UI. Make sure you put your database here so that Prisma can connect to our database. After you have put up the connection URL, let's just go to schema.prisma file and put up a basic post model. So this post model consists of an ID which is a primary key, a title which is a string and a created it which is a date and time. It's a basic Prisma file and let's make migrations so that it affects our database. To migrate, type npx prisma migrate dev and name it as init. If you don't know what is Prisma or how to do migrations, make sure you check out my video of Prisma. I will link it in the cards. So uh, migration has been performed. Let's go to the next section. Now let's seed our database with some fake data so that we can work with infinite scroll UI pattern. So create a file called seed.ts. You can name it anything. Seed.js and let's import, import Prisma client and lorem from faker. So we got Prisma client, which is our ORM and just initialize prisma and let's write a seed function which is an asynchronous function and let's create an array for promises and let's create an empty array so uh, of some 50 so that we have some 50 posts and let's fill it with some dummy data and then for each of them we will be creating a single post so for each of them let's just we are not using anything from the for each loop so let's just put an underscore there and inside of promises let's just push Prisma dot create Prisma dot post dot create and in here we will provide the data argument as uh, we have only title and it's lorem dot sentence so this will create some fake data and then we have to await it so that it can take changes inside of database so post equals to await promise dot all and post promises and then just let's log it so that we can see and let's call the function and let's catch some errors if there are any and just exit the process out there we go and finally, let's disconnect with the database. And 
and this is an asynchronous function so we have to await it there we go this is our basic seed script so in order to take it in order to make it so we have to put a prisma key inside of package.json and put a seed as a key and say what you want to run so node prisma slash c.js and now open your console and type npx prisma db c this will run the file and seed our database with some fake data there you go we have created all 50 posts now that we have some data inside of our database let's create a basic api route so that we can query the data so inside of pages inside api directory create a file name post.ts and let's just import our requirements and i am importing the types of the request and response and our prisma client initializing the prisma client now we will uh, now let's just write the route uh, export default async route which is request as next api request and response as next api response and then in here we will check if the request dot method is get and if it's get request let's just get our post prisma dot post dot find many this will return every post inside of our database so let's just return our posts now that we have our api route let's go and query the data from the front end so inside of pages inside of index.js let's write a use effects so that we can fetch our data so i'm gonna clean all these things delete all these things and it simply return high there and let's import use effect import use effect from react and let's and let's import also import axios from axios side of use effect we will be making a request so let's make it's an empty dependency array so that we don't request for every render and let's just write an iffy is and it's an async function and let's await for data is equals to await axios.get slash api slash post slash post will be the file name that we have created inside of api directory so inside of api we have posts so we will be creating slash post route and let's get the data and just log it to the console and now let's start our dev server with npm run dev this will spin up a local development server at port 3000 so if you just click over there you will have your project running inside of browser and it's just loading let's open console and let's see if it has loaded yes it's it has loaded and inside of console we can see our posts with 50 posts over here inside of console so hence we know now that our route is working and in the next section we will see how we are going to use react query to achieve infinite scroll now let's see how we are going to implement this so on the initial load we are going to load some posts from the database and then when the user scrolls down to see more posts and there are no posts we are going to use javascript's intersection observer api and fetch some more posts in the background how we are going to do this is we are going to have a query parameter called cursor cursor will make sure where the prisma should start fetching from for example if there is empty cursor and we are going to limit the number of posts per request as three 
and the cursor is empty then we are going to fetch the first three posts and then inside the response we are going to send along with the post we are going to send next id which will be used as a cursor in the next request so when the user scrolls down and makes another request the cursor value will be three and prisma sees this and starts querying from three since we have to ignore the duplicates we are not going to send third post instead we are going to skip one so we are going to send four five and six as posts so here we are going to send post post four five post five and post six and the next id will be the last id of the last post i mean it's the id of the post six that is six and then the next query that is the third request the cursor will be the value of next id so that is six and this is how we are going to implement it using react query and prisma see you in the next section where we are going to write the code for this now let's implement the cursor based searching with prisma so let's first define the limit number of posts that we are going to fetch per request and then the cursor let's get the cursor as request.query.cursor if it's undefined let's just make it as an empty string and let's define the cursor object as prisma defines it as prisma ex ex accepts it expects it i'm sorry so it's because if cursor is an empty string we don't want to send anything because we if if the, if the cursor is just empty then we will be sending first three posts else we are going to send an object with id as our cursor but since this is a in a string we are going to convert to integer because an id is an integer but let's just type cast it and there we go so we have a cursor object now let's just pass in the options to find many initially let's just pass limit uh, i'm sorry it's take this will ensure it only takes the amount we have specified that is five and next is our cursor object so cursor is our cursor object so there we go and then skip so essentially we skip if the cursor is empty or else we don't skip so if cursor is empty then skip none then skip zero uh, if it's not then skip one post and along with this we are going to send the next id which is the last id of the post which is at last so copilot is showing me something and it's pretty good yes so we are going to send next id as if post dot length is equal to the limit we are going to send the last post id uh i don't need plus one over here else we are going to send undefined so essentially we will not have this next id in the response so this is a basic api route we'll be using to fetch posts from the front end. So let's see how we'll be implementing the React query part in the next section. Now let's install React query and React intersection observer. So install these two and let's just wait until it finishes. Now that we have installed the required packages, go to underscore app.js and let's let's wrap the provider of the react query so let's import it first let's import query not query q query client and query client query client provider here it is and let's initiate a query client as new query client and wrap this component with query client provider uh, 
and pass the client and hence we have enabled react query in our application now let's just go back to our index route and implement react queries use infinite query hook so it's pretty interesting let's get started with import from react query use infinite query so let's let's use it we can delete this use effect for now and let's write the code further so const and destructured object is equals to use infinite query and the first argument is a key and i am giving the key as posts and the second argument is the actual function that we are going to fetch so this is an async function and we have access to the page parameters value here and let's just default it to empty string now let's do our fetch call so await axios.get and let's do slash api slash post and cursor value is the page parameter So this is the route we are going to visit so that we can get the data and let's return the data that you are going to get and it's important because while we are going to fetch the next page it has to know what is the page param of the next page. So this page param is essentially the thing that we are returning from the this particular function so here open another object and hit control space and you are going to see something called get next page param so this is a function which will take the result of the last page and return the page param for the next page so the result will be last page dot next id because we are returning post and next id in the response so next id will be the Thing we are going to return if there's nothing then let's just put this false so it knows that there is nothing to fetch more so initially this is an empty string and when we are going to request for the first time we are going to get the next id and this from this function it returns so and the next time when it fetches the page param will no longer be this empty string but the next id that has been returned from the previous request and so it knows this way that which what is the value of the cursor and this is the first part and the next part is we are going to get some things from our response first is is loading this is the first initial loading and if it's an error and the actual data the actual error value and this is is fetching is is fetching next page so that we can know when we have to show the loading symbol and loading text and more and fetch next page this is the actual function we are going to use to fetch the next page and has next page so this is to decide whether or not we have to fetch the next page so this is the basic use of use infinite query so let's just log the data out and check if we are getting any data and let's go to the browser let's refresh and watch the console there we go we have some response so the data is page brands and it's an array and it has a one value undefined because initially there is no page brands and next we have pages which is an array and each element of the array is the response that we are sending from our api route so posts and it has five posts and the next id exactly this is what we wanted now let's map through this post and show the respective posts inside the browser 
So here I'm inside the VS code and let's initially just do some safety checks so that if it's loading, let's return a loading symbol. And if it's an error, let's just show it's an error. So return an error. And if it's not, then we are going to map through the data and show some posts. So in this, let's just check if there is data and data dot data has pages. Remember that data dot pages dot map for each page. We are going to return a fragment fragment and this fragment has a key of page dot next id remember uh, if it ha doesn't has any let's just say it's the last page and inside here again we have posts key for each page and we will be mapping through that and for each post let's return something basically let's do a div and side uh, let's just go with paragraphs so post dot id and let's duplicate it and post dot title and post dot created it so it's complaining me that it is of type any so let's just give it a quick type title is string and created at is a date so now let's go and see the browser there we go we are having our post and it's currently not fetching anything more because we haven't implemented it yet but in the next section we are going to style this thing and let's implement the fetching when we scroll about at the bottom of the page so let's go back to vs code so here i am gonna just paste some code some css to make it a little bit pretty And let's give some classes to our HTML. I mean JSX container, and this is post. Let's see how does it look. There we go, dark blue. So this is a basic implementation. And let's now see how can we get more data when the user scrolls down so we want essentially some marker something so that we can say that it has entered the screen and we can just fetch again in the background so i am putting a span over here i am saying it as intersection observer marker doesn't matter what you do the main thing is we have to make this as visibility hidden so we'll make it hidden and browser knows it is there but we can't see it and whenever this enters into the screen we are going to make another request so for that we have to we have to use another hook from react intersection observer which is called use in view so let's use this so uh destructure the object and use in view and this returns you a ref which you can pass into a element that you want to observe and a in view property which says if the span is or if the element is in view or not so let's pass in the ref and now every time this appears into the screen we have to fetch right so let's do it with a use effect so use effect and 
we will be doing this every time in view changes and essentially we we should do it only when if it's in view and not it's are not out of view and if it has the next page so i'm checking if it's in view and has next page and remember this is nothing but we have got from use infinite query so if it has next page then fetch next page that is it and let's let's make a small loading marker so that we know if it's loading so we have this is fetching next page and we can use that to say is fetching next page and if it's fetching next page and put a loading and give it a class of loading so this is all it needs and let's check if it works refresh the browser and we get the initial post and after fifth post we should make a request and get some more posts so let me scroll down and there we go we got we didn't actually see the loading because it's too fast it's actually there but it's too fast we'll fix this and basically we are getting all the posts if you see so let's just see the loading screen we can wait over here for some time before actually making requests so await new promise and there goes copilot so we are waiting for one second and let's now see if we can get the loading indicator working so we get the post scroll down we see loading more posts and loading and some more posts and loading this is how easy it is to implement infinite scroll UI pattern with React Query. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it and share it with your friends. And if you got any queries, make sure you put them in the comments. And until then, see you next time. Goodbye.